Today, we're gonna to teach you how to accelerate your recovery using this biohack. Welcome back to the Prehab Channel. Dr. Craig Lindell here. Dr. Michael Lau. And today Mike's playing the patient because what we're doing is we're gonna show you how to accelerate your recovery using BFR, AKA blood flow restriction training. And what we're showing right now is Mike is actually doing an IPC cycle with the brand new Gen 3 cuffs by Smart Tools. So we just got our hands on these. We're pretty stoked to use them. This is literally the first time Mike is actually using it. But more importantly, we wanna show you how you can use this stuff because with the new Gen 3, it's plug and play. You can grab this stuff off the shelf and you can do it at home. And Mike and I, we get to test for it with patients. This thing is amazing. It's oh, yeah. completely changed the industry of rehab and how we know it because there's so much scientific evidence to support that this can truly accelerate recovery. So Mike right now is going through an IPC cycle. What that means is the cuff is pumped up all the way to 100%. And we have the Smart Cuffs Pro version. So using that cord, we can measure LOP in any position. And we have the cord tethered, meaning that we're monitoring the pressure the entire time. And you're gonna notice on our other camera angle that his quad is just getting engorged with blood. The thing is swelling up. If we were to measure it, you would see it's just getting so much bigger. So with that being said, we're gonna dive into common lower body injuries and how you can use BFR to accelerate your recovery with your rehab exercises. All right, so we're actually gonna work our way from the bottom up, and I wanna start by talking about the Achilles tendon. So the Achilles tendon tends to get injured with athletes and runners, and typically it's because of doing too much too soon. What do I mean by that? Just overloading it. Have you ever gone for an eight mile run and then next thing you know, you wake up the next day and your Achilles tendon is just killing you? That's because you did too much too soon. However, it's counterintuitive. The only way to rehab the Achilles tendon is to actually find the appropriate dose of load. So I have Mike set up here and we're just gonna start with basic heel raises. So Mike has his knee extended and that's gonna really bias the gastrocnemius. We want to focus on the gastroc as well as the soleus, but we have him focus on isolating the gastrocnemius. Now, this is as basic as it gets for focusing on that complex. However, do not underestimate this stuff with BFR <laughs> as it can still get extremely challenging. And we have a ton of research to support, hey, just doing body weight stuff like this can help heal an Achilles tendon. So say that this is easy, right? I can easily just bring in a step and say, Mike, let's do this now with your heel hanging off the edge. What we're doing is we're stretching that Achilles tendon further. We're loading it. This is really good if you're dealing with mid portion Achilles tendinopathy. But if you're dealing with Achilles tendon all the way down at the bottom by your heel, maybe you don't wanna do this because you're only adding more compression to the tendon and tendons don't like to be compressed. All right, say that this is easy. Now, this is probably my favorite exercise to do with BFR. Mike, let's go into that load and lift. Mike is doing a little bit of a soleus raise too. Now, what he can do is, Mike, let's be here and even reach further and see if you can stay on your toe the entire time. So with this exercise, Mike is now working his entire limb that's what's great about BFR is it's not only gonna work the injured area, but your entire leg is going to get extremely fatigued. And staying on that toe, keeping that heel off the ground, is gonna be working that gastroc soleus complex isometrically, concentrically, and eccentrically the entire time. The next exercise that we're going to cover is jumper's knee. If you've ever had jumper's knee, if you've ever had a patellar tendon issue, you know the worst thing to experience and feel is bending and loading it. However, just like the Achilles tendon, the way that it got hurt is the same way that we need to rehab it. We just have to find the appropriate amount of dosage. Maybe you're already wondering and thinking to yourself, okay, if I get these cuffs, I'm doing these exercises, how many sets should I do? How many reps should I do? Number one, Definitely check out the packaging and the instructions that it comes with. It's gonna walk you through everything. 
but the most basic way to think about it is typically we do four sets of the movement. If it's showing reps, we're doing 30, three sets of 15, but really it comes down to just fatigue. If Mike were my patient, I'm gonna be like, Mike, we're gonna do four sets of this, and you're doing four sets of fatigue. Because if you're working to fatigue, that means that you're accomplishing those goals of stressing the tissue. Let's get back to jumper's knee. What do you do? Well, Mike's gonna find the amount of knee flexion that he can tolerate and get there and hold that position. Mike is pumped up right now, and what I like to do is, hey Mike, you can just stand and hold that single leg balance. Well, Mike's fit, so we gotta make it harder. Mike, let's <laughs> throw this band on and let's do some tapping. You can get so creative here, right? It's a matter of if you wanna focus on the hips more, which can be really beneficial with jumper's knee, getting strong hips and working away from a knee dominant strategy to incorporating that hip strategy. Mike can be doing tapping. He can be doing fire hydrants, you name it. You can get as creative as you want. Now, how can we start loading that tissue more? Mike, let's get you on a wedge. What does that wedge do? It's gonna get his heel up. It's gonna get his ankle plantar flexed. What does that typically do? It drives the shin forward, driving the knees over the toes, loading and stressing that tissue more. So it's gonna be like, hey, get as low as you can, get that knee as far forward as you can. We wanna work that tissue. It should be getting stressed, but something that you can tolerate. Mike doesn't want to do too many reps because I'm nope. having a feeling his Tissue's leg is starting to, get, <laughs> starting to get worked. So last but not least, typically what's going to bother this injury is going downstairs, really driving the knee far forward over the toe so we can do a forward step down with this. So Mike, just a few for the camera. Just show loading that up. His leg's got to be burning. He's got to be pretty tired right now. But again, if Mike were my patient, I'm like, work through it, load this up, literally go until you can only do maybe one rep, if not two reps more, and then take at least a 30 second break. And then we just keep going for four total sets. And a little PSA, if you hate your PT because they're pushing you that hard, it means you found a good PT. It means that you're doing this right. You're doing it right. All right, last but not least, hamstring, soft tissue injuries. Last April, I was plagued by a hamstring injury. Two weeks ago, I pulled my hamstring while warming up for sprints. And let me tell you, pulled hamstrings absolutely sucks. It sucked, it was one of the worst experiences. I haven't tweaked a hamstring since soccer probably over a decade ago. But this is so common. It's so common in the average gym goer, the weekend warrior. But what's amazing is using BFR with soft tissue injuries. I literally have patients and clients that know if they ever tweak something and it's soft tissue, to get in immediately. That's because we have so much science to support that if you can work a muscle right away, we're actually going to mitigate the negative effects of a soft tissue injury, including scar tissue, including range of motion loss and atrophy. So being able to just engorge that muscle with a ton of blood, which muscles already have good blood supply, that's why they're easier to rehab and they heal faster compared to our ligaments and tendons, but blood helps to heal things faster. And the more that you can work it with less pain, which BFR is also really good at, the better. So Mike here, we're gonna talk about scaling and progressing the RDL. We're just gonna work with an RDL, a hip hinge progression, right? So Mike can just be going with no body weight. One thing that I learned when I strained my hamstring was that there was a specific range with the amount of hip flexion and knee flexion and extension that I had that would just really light up the area that I injured. And just like we learned with the Achilles as well as the knee injury, that is counterintuitive. We have to load the same exact area, the same exact movement that actually injured us in the first place. So what Mike is showing now is he's actually moving to that range. So starting out, you may only want to hip hinge and go to the point where you just feel those symptoms and then back off but just know that you actually want to work through that entire range of motion. And with the BFR body weight, that'll be plenty. But then we also want to load it up. So now Mike's going to show with the weight that he's going to find that specific range that doesn't feel good, but he's going to hold it with a weight. Because as long as we're not moving and the muscle isn't shortening and lengthening, then it may not be as painful. So you can just hold it isometrically with a weight. The muscle was working. You're building a lot of tension which is great with BFR. That's how we're gonna get that muscle to adapt. 
but it's not lengthening or shortening, so it tends to feel a little bit better. Now, with that weight, now you can move through the full range of motion. Maybe you start out with partial. Again, you're just going to the edge of where you feel your symptoms, then backing off and standing tall, but then you wanna work through that full range of motion. The beauty of BFR, like we've talked about earlier, is the benefit of you can do micro progressions, not just full progressions, but micro progressions. Instead of going double leg to single leg, you can go staggered. You can increase how far you're getting staggered and you can change the range of motion. So Mike's showing the staggered dumbbell, uh, not dumbbell, kettlebell. It's uh, silly to say that, huh? So Mike is showing now a staggered deadlift with the kettlebell and he's slowly moving through the full range of motion. But then what we can do is we can make a deficit where he adds in the step and he's doing even a deeper range of motion if that's what he needs. And then eventually he can work to a single leg RDL and even do it on the box like he's showing now with a deficit. This will absolutely light up your hamstring with the BFR, no doubt about it. All right, so let's wrap this up. With blood flow restriction training, you can accelerate your recovery with any lower body injury, even upper body injury. And like we mentioned earlier, definitely check out the articles that we have dedicated to this topic. We actually have two articles and you can really get lost in this rabbit hole because those articles are long and they're deep. All right, with that being said, leave comments. Let us know what you liked about this video. What would you wanna learn more about? Definitely hit the subscribe button and let us know what you wanna see the next time.